You set foot on foreign soil. Only this land isn't ruled by any country or government. In this land we celebrate music. In this land we celebrate games. In this land we celebrate those who compose video game music. Welcome to the VG Embassy. Embassy. Welcome and thanks for tuning in to another episode of the VG Embassy. This is a show centered around video game music and the amazing online community of fans and podcasters that enjoy it. My name's Ed, and on each episode I'll take the role of Prime VGM Minister and invite a guest VG Ambassador onto the show to share with us their own video game music culture. Or I may share a part of my culture on a solo show. And uh, so today is, and it's been almost exactly a year since our last one, it is Blind Listen, uh, I think this is Blind Listen number five, Xenon Valkyrie, with none other than my pal, Rob Nichols. Mr. Rob, how are you today? Blind Listen number five. Number five. <laughs> hey, this is me, Rob Nichols. Hi. <laughs> doing doing the Rob thing. Doing the Rob thing, yeah. Yeah, we were talking, we're, we're hyped for this. Yeah. So, okay, in case you guys haven't listened to a Blind Listen show before, mm-hmm. what we do is uh so one of our dear esteemed patrons and friend of the show dan lawton has submitted to us a soundtrack that and back me up on this rob neither one of us have ever heard of this game before right 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 you said that we're going to do this thing don't look up anything about it Mm -hmm. and i didn't see any of like the tracks or anything until right now yeah and you were like hey let's check this out and like i love these past episodes They're they're my favorites where it's like we're just listening to the music, right? And then we're just going to kind of extrapolate like what the game is. Postulate, right? theorize. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. All about it. Yeah, it sounds so, like fun. So yeah, our last Blind Listen was Blind Listen 4, Nova Storm with the Dyad. That was almost exactly a year ago. That came out on January 31st, 2019. Wow. And uh, and so Dan Lawton has a, uh, a connection for the two of us. He's just... Yeah, he married us. <laughs> he officiated. Yes, exactly. Speaking of marriage... He, he and his wife are uh, doing a new podcast called Village Persons, and it's all about being progressive parents and, and raising good humans in the 21st century. And uh, so his first one is out. You can go to villagepersonspodcast.com. And, uh, and so, Rob, you're doing the theme music for the show. Yes. And yes. I'm doing the editing for the show. So it's kind of a collaboration within the VGM community, but it's not a VGM podcast. No, and it's not VGM music. But um, yeah, he said that his wife was really into like lo-fi hip hop. And I released a bunch of lo-fi, lo-fi hip hop mixes and songs, like original stuff. You can find it on SoundCloud. If you just, I don't know, look it up somewhere. And it's also on Spotify. Uh, and they just enjoyed it. So they said, hey, let's bring the music on. So... Um, if you like the theme music to Rhythm and Pixels, it's like that, mm. but, without, but without the Yoshi sounds. <laughs> yes, yes. And a little more chill, I think. A little more xanax Yes, yeah, totally, totally. But uh, but it works out very well. It's fantastic background music for the show. Makes my editing easy, so everything worked out. Um, and, and Dan didn't plan this out either. Uh, I think he had requested you on as a guest for this show long before he even like had plans to do his podcast. That was a while ago. So, uh, Oh, right. Yeah. This is all just sort of turned up. It's crazy. how this whole podcast, like turned into like a big community thing, all these different podcasts, all these different, even though the VGM bands, like I'm doing uh, programming for a video game for the mad gear. And then they brought on uh, Carlos from the heroes three podcast to do some of the artwork and it's yes. like wow and we all, we all got to meet each other at magfest and it was it was really cool i was like okay everyone's here we're all in person <laughs> all right yep yep it's 
really cool. And I think you might see some of uh, Carlito's artwork uh, on a VG Embassy show coming up pretty soon, too. So oh, awesome. He's He is so good. <laughs> he is really good. Yeah, coming up on my uh, 50th episode. So I wanted to do something a little a little special for that. Oh, so. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So, all right. So as far as Blind Listen episodes go, and I know, you know, my Discord is is... Very hopping all the time. Lots of people love to talk about the new episodes when they come out. I have a specific channel on my Discord server called Blind Listen Spoilers. Yes. So if you have listened to the show and you want to talk about it, make sure you chat about it in there. And if you're going to chat about it in the regular channel, be very vague or try to get people to listen to this one. But if you want to actually talk about the details of the show and what goes on, keep it to the Blind Listen Spoilers for at least the first, like, couple weeks that this show comes out make sure everybody gets a chance to listen to it and I'll, I'll i'll maintain the radio silence on my end yes i know i'm gonna go into work tomorrow i just want to tell everybody <laughs> you'll never hey guess guys, what kind of game this was and they're gonna look at me and be like what what <laughs> what do you even do outside of work just get back to work <laughs> that's what i'm about. So, uh, so we got a couple blanks to fill in as we go through this show and uh, so we're going to be talking about who the composer might be oh, okay uh, what platform the system might be on. So what system, Switch, PC, mm. Super Nintendo, etc. Um, okay. An approximate year that it might have come out based on the music. You know, it's going to be easy to tell 8, 16-bit music, but with Red Book audio, streaming audio, it might be a little more difficult, but sometimes you can definitely tell like a Sega CD game versus a Switch game. Or if it's a modern title that's got like a retro bent. Yep. Like the music for um, that new like Contra type game, Blazing Chrome. Yes. Oh. That is sick, but it sounds like legit old school. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So that might throw us for a loop. Uh, and then, you know, the genre and the, and the type of game that we're talking about. So is this yeah, RPG yeah. music? Is it uh, a side-scrolling hack and slash music? Is it platforming music? So we'll try to figure that out. And uh, lastly, the developer and the publisher. That's the hardest one because, you know, based on music, it's really hard to tell. But sometimes 8-bit, 16-bit music has that Konami sound to it or might have that Capcom sound to it. So that might yeah. Yeah, lead true. us to some conclusions. So you never know. Yeah, a lot of 8-bit tracks got like, you can you can tell if it's, there's a more of a Western influence. Right. Um, there's, there's very few um, Eastern composers that have the Western influence attached to it. So... Uh, we'll find out. Yep, exactly. So at the end of the show, after the last track, we will pull the metaphorical curtain back, and Dan has written us a uh, encoded testimonial that mm. will kind of do a little bit of explaining about what the game is about, and then we'll we'll kind of do a little Google search and and come up with our own. Uh, you know, we'll figure out what the game is all about, and then we'll announce. You know, basically okay. say how close we came to our guesses. Hopefully it's not one of those like PC-98 games and I'll Google it and then immediately get on some government watch list. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Dan, Dan Dan's above the board. So. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, uh, I think he's, he's, he's aware this is a family friendly show, so I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> no, I'm excited. Uh, so can we talk about the, the title? Is this the, this is the actual title? Yes. Is Xenon Valkyrie. Xenon Valkyrie. So based on that, Ooh. what do you think we might be looking at here? Just, uh, right. just a shot of the dark kind of. All right, Spitball. so, I mean, like, that is such a crazy futuristic name, right? It's To me, it already sounds like a DDR music track. Like, <laughs> right. like I, got, I, I got four perfects on a Xenon Valkyrie, but oh, it is really shoot 'em up sounding uh, to me, like, okay. right off the bat. Yeah. And and because it's got the DDR connection, I'm like, I'm really leaning on to the, uh, the Konami side of things. Like, it sounds like Japanese, like, picking two random kind of futuristic fantasy style American like English words and like sticking them in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you know, a Valkyrie is like a, that's like a, a female warrior mm -hmm. of olden times, mm -hmm. but adding that Xenon in front of it gives you like a kind of like a glowing, powerful, futuristic. So it's kind of, yeah, combining like an anachronistic kind of a title. So I'm envisioning kind of a cyberpunk meets like Norse gods kind of a that thing. That would be cool. Based yeah. on the title. I, this is what's going to happen. We're going to like come up with our own game in our heads and then like everything is going to fall short of what we actually <laughs> what we really want. <laughs> like, oh, we got to make we got to make the game that we're talking about now. Well, I was joking with Dan. I was like this is going to end up being like a go-kart pizza delivery simulator or something. <laughs> 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 it's like one of the yeah yeah there was a ton of um kart racing games that came out after mario kart that were just like clones mm -hmm. on the pc and if this is one of those but it was called xenon valkyrie 
Like that'd be amazing. Yes, I would. But it's like a, it's just like a penguin in a go kart <laughs> <laughs> with like a flaming sword. One of these days, somebody's going to throw us a curveball like that, and I'm going to enjoy awesome. every minute of it. I uh, love it. All right, so let's get into our first track. We've got uh, roughly 20 tracks to go through, and uh, but usually, like I said, you know, it seems like a lot of music, but our talking in between these these tracks is going to be a little bit shorter because we're going to be more guessing than explaining things. So uh, let's start off with the appropriately titled intro, mm-hmm. and we'll be right back. That was actually intro and intro two. They were two separate tracks, but because of the way that intro one ended with that kind of we just had to start playing intro two. So yeah, this was this was not what I expected because I expected more of a kind of modern sounding soundtrack based on the title of the game. So this is um I don't know, it's like NES on steroids. What'd you think? Right. So, like, there's so many things here that, that scream throwback to me, right? Mm. So, um, there is, first of all, the bass sound is huge, enormous, which is uh, awesome, super yeah. awesome. First but, thing but, I noticed, too. But on the NES, the, the triangle channel did not have a volume control, so it was only ever going to be a certain volume. And this sounds like it was doubled up with something else. Maybe it was, like, a like two triangle waves kind of detuned out with a square mm, wave. Like it, mm. it's heavy for a reason. And then um, a lot of the lead sounds, although they sound like classic uh, square waves, um, I'm realizing I'm doing that thing with my hand that one does not just enter Mordor <laughs> with the square waves. Um, no, it, it's the, the, the square waves have that, that the duty cycle kind of changed out to make different voices, but there's a little reverb on it. And if you listen to classic NES and Game Boy reverb, what they'll do is they'll take the second channel and sort of like bounce it back and forth and ping pong it into lower volumes. Right. But this one sounds like it's it's legit like delaying out like a tape delay. And you can't do that on classic hardware. Yeah. So either this is like something that was done to emulate those sounds in an older game that's what i was thinking yeah or maybe maybe like taking like chip sounds and using them in a more modern right. tracker like open mpt or something like that but but there are three or four different wave channels that are pure tones there is a definitely noise channel rocking out those drums yep yeah and there's definitely some kind of like like you know down sampled like two bit four bit like Konami drum kind of style going on in the background. So something is really hitting it. What did you think of that, that first opening? It was kind of sinister. Like, what do you think was going on there? Yeah, I, I thought, to me, that felt like that kind of cutscene where the camera's kind of like panning over like a landscape of some mm-hmm. sort rising up. And like, as you, as the camera rises up, you see this kind of like, you know, giant evil tower with stars in the background and stuff. So I felt like this was kind of setting up the scene for the evil 
that <laughs> exists in the world. Right. And then when the drums kick in and it gets a little more heroic sounding, this is like, okay, so this is the force that's against the evil that we just introduced in the first scene. And so that's that's kind of like what's building up into the actual gameplay itself. Yeah. All right, now do you think that there's more like opening cutscene going on while that heroic music is playing? Or do you think it goes boom right to the to the press start to, to begin mm, the game? That's a good question. Right when that it's is like, a good question. Like um, Journey to Silius kind of does that where it's like kind of jumps right in. I'm gonna say maybe there's a slight maybe a picture or two of the heroes. The mm-hmm, protagonist mm-hmm. or pro- protagonists of the game, and then it'll mm-hmm. like fade to white, and okay. then it'll fade into the title screen. This is yeah, that, yeah. that kind of feel to me for sure. Yes. So we've got like an opening cinematic for sure. Like you cannot deny that. But what type of game it is, still unsure about. Yeah. Yeah. I do know that from based on what we've heard so far, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the music. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This sounds awesome. Um, I'm thinking action platformer at this point. It it might change several times as we go through the show, but. Uh, okay. I'm not rolling out Kart Racer, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll it's a out. it's an action platformer pizza delivery simulator. Uh, oh, wow. That could work. I'd be, I'd who be knows? That. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so Dan didn't give these song files to me in any particular order. Ooh. Um, so what I did was at least I took the intros and put them at the, the front of the show. And there are a couple towards the end, which are obviously like ending tracks by their titles. Uh, and I put those at the end of the list. So the the middle ground here is kind of just a bunch of different level names that are all okay. in alphabetical order because that's just how they line up, you know, right, in Windows. Right, right. So we're going to listen to all of these kind of out of order. So we can't really take any sort of build up or or, or let down in these kind of songs into, into any sort of account because we don't know what um, order they appear in in the game. So just letting you know that. Okay. But starting with A, we are going to listen to our next track called Ancient Tech Forest, which fits right in line with the Xenon Valkyrie title. They're really going with this kind of old meets new here, which is really cool. I'm into it. Okay. I'm thinking like cyborg ninjas. All right. Let's just go. Let's just go. All right. Let's go. (laughs) Be right back. That was Ancient Tech Forest. Wow. So, uh, great song, actually. Uh, Very dancey. Yes. And it's got a lot of really highfalutin, catchy, like 16th and 32nd notes really kind of bombarding you as you're listening to it. Mm -hmm. Um, It didn't grab me much until the lead came in. And that lead melody is super catchy. Dun, da, 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 and then kind of goes higher and higher, so very heroic sounding there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, what'd you think of it? I think that lead was very Mega Man. Yes, there's a lot of inspiration from Mega Man here. I forget what the song that is. I was actually gonna gonna mention that about the uh, percussion and the intro as yes. well. I got a very Mega Man feel. Yeah, those toms sound like um like a sine wave or a triangle wave, just like swept from like down frequencies. Get equipped with Xenon Valkyrie. <laughs> Get equipped with Ed on the podcast. <laughs> I'm sure our listeners love that. Um, no, so um, 
Yeah, so I for for me it was that opening like arpeggio like that just kind of carries it through. Yeah, that gets me every time. If 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 they take that and then layer it with maybe another like arpeggio and then just like start sweeping like a melody on top of that or modulate um, a bass line up and down through that, like it just hooks me instantly. And something I'm like I'm really easy to please in that way. <laughs> Did Dan Lawton? Did he pick this game for us specifically? Because I feel like this is in our wheelhouses. Yes. So I I asked, I was like, so pick a soundtrack and also keep in mind um, a person that might appreciate this soundtrack. So mm. yes, you were okay. you were handpicked <laughs> for sure. Like, wow. So the, my, my tastes, because I mean, I never met him in person. So my, that means my tastes and your tastes have really come through in all of the, uh, the podcast work that we've done. Absolutely. Um, so what else did I write down while we were listening to this? So... I was starting to think maybe this could be a puzzle game because when I hear a lot of, again, a lot of that arpeggiated sound that carries through, to me, I feel like it could be part of a puzzle game or a puzzle section. Okay. But then once that once that lead came in, it felt like like the level three of a platformer. Like if you're playing Ninja Gaiden or Ninja Turtles, like that first level is like the super hook. Like it's it's like. That's like the single that gets released on the radio. Yeah. And then like level two is the B side that like only like the cool kids know about, but you got there. <laughs> level three is, level three in those games is, um, okay, I'm actually getting good at this game and the kids on the playground have no idea what, what happens after level two. Right. And so, and so it rewards you with like this killer music. And level four is the one that only your uncle at Nintendo has ever gotten to. <laughs> yeah, look, my dad works at Nintendo. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And he told me that you can unlock Sonic and Super Mario Brothers. Oh my god, right. Yeah, Laura Croft gets totally naked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like I really I really 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 into this. I'm still I'm with you on the on the platformer side, but I'm kind of fooling around with the idea of a puzzle game just because it's it's sounding like a really cool modern and like and these tracks are kind of short so they're looping pretty pretty quickly yeah i'm also thinking about dan's proclivities for games and mm-hmm. i know that he is very i mean we did that challenging games episode together he's very much an action guy and he's very much a intense gameplay kind of guy yeah i, I haven't yeah. heard him talk too much about puzzle games that doesn't mean he doesn't like them but that's another thing that's kind of poking me more towards this being maybe a very uh, hardcore kind of a platform action game. I'm, I'm thinking definitely 2D pixel art graphics based on the music. I think we can probably agree on that. Yeah, yeah. Or or 2D pixel art like kind of shoved into a 3D game. That's becoming more of an aesthetic mm. nowadays too. So depending yeah. on how how recent this thing is, but I'm, I'm I'm ready to get into some more more tracks. How many pixels do you think each pepperoni takes up on the uh, delivery? Oh, that is a good question because th- these this is future pizza, right? So like this is this is not this is not your grandma's pizza. This is like titanium pizza that comes through the dark web. It's probably cooked with black ship energy, which just happens to be the title of our next track. Oh, burp, burp, burp. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a listen. We'll be right back. Thank you. 
And we're back. You're listening to Black Ship Energy from the game Xenon Valkyrie with Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy. Wait, who's hosting the show? <laughs> so, Ed, thanks for coming on the show with me today. Oh, thanks. It's a pleasure um, to be here. Yeah, we had we had we have some crazy listeners who who just don't like to tell us what games they're from, but they like to send us the music that they like. It's this weird kind of, it's almost like we're listening without being able to see or something. <laughs> yeah, it's a blind, it's a blind listen. Huh. You know what's funny is on, on, on my show, Breath of in Pixels, every week on Wednesdays, I haven't played half the games on the show. So a lot of the times, uh, Pranav will play music and then I have to have him describe to me the game that it's from and where right, it is right. and, it's, and it kind of paints that picture. This, this, uh, it sounds, it's black ship energy. It does sound like you're on a, like a, a pirate ship or some kind of ship that's out in the ocean and it's definitely raining. Yeah. Definitely okay. raining. That's, that's what I'm seeing. I was getting a very Caribbean vibe from this, especially mm. that bass line has a very Jamaica dub kind of a bum, 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 you know, it made me kind of want to nod my head back and forth like I do to like dubstep music and yeah. stuff so it had that kind of a cadence to it but it was dark it was like a dark dub but it was dark and there was a lot of those real heavy not not heavy but really like twinkly and long mm-hmm. intense arpeggiated decrescendos at the at the beginning of the song right so it kind of like it feels like what I imagined anyway was this ship like what you see is like a stormy sky right lightning going off you're getting these arpeggios going crazy from the from the wind or whatever, and then this ship kind of like breaks through the clouds. And as it breaks through the clouds, that's when that dubby bass starts kicking yeah. in. And you oh. see the mechanical moving parts, mm. and it's kind of like describing the music and such. So that's the vision I had. Yeah, yeah, that bass is great. We're, we're also getting a little bit of how the uh, a little bit of the composer's kind of fingerprint, the composer's mm. how they're because the past two tracks have kind of started started in a very similar way. And it loops really well um, in that way. And it also kind of creates tension that's not tied to the gameplay. It's not adaptive to the actual gameplay. So it's it's clearly composed in an old school style. Yeah, like that's a good short, point. Short tracks, lots of emotion that kind of go up and down, A, a section, B section, and then like kind of a looping bridge. Um, which makes me think that if, if all the tracks are kind of done up this way, then something is happening leading up to where it would say player start and then it begins like when the beat hits that kind of thing i can see that i can see that and but i think also that these uh so the the music that we're listening to um doesn't fade and it doesn't loop so we're hearing it one time through and then it just hard cuts where it loops into the next and from my ears it sounds like you would hear that intro then every yeah. single time like it loops the full thing yeah, so that's right 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 yeah, very interesting, and, and, hmm. and I'm starting to I'm make still... some guesses about the hardware, and I'm starting to th- I'm, that that it's just that bass alone is making me feel C64 because it's just so large. Yeah, I know C64 usually has kind of a filtered sound to it, um, so it's kind of um, a little more not muffled but kind of muffly because uh, a lot of uh, chiptune composers like to to mess around with that sort of thing. But it's so big, it's just so big. That like everything else, it's, it's either that or it's someone on a Fama Tracker or an NES hardware. But like on the side, they have like a Jupiter Eight keyboard, and there they just turned it all the way up, and, <laughs> and there's like a, like a limiter and a compressor on the end of it. And they're like, burr, burr, burr. Um, well, I, are you familiar with uh, Hively Tracker? With the, with the say what now? Hively Tracker. No. So tell me about this. So the in the Amiga, the Paula sound chip has the capability to kind of emulate what the SID does, mm. but it's a little less filtered sounding. It has a couple more channels, and so you can use this program called Hively Tracker to make chip music on the Amiga Paula sound chip. Oh. And I think that sounds more like this than the SID chip. So I think you're on the right course there with the SID, but I feel like it probably fits more with the Hively Tracker stuff okay. than, than Sid. Or more likely, it's a composer that's really familiar with C64 and Amiga tracking, mm. working, working on like modern hardware, maybe like okay. a tracker with doing like post effects, like in a modern like digital audio workstation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like doing all the, all the, the post editing and everything there. Yeah. Um, 
kind of like Matt Kramer, where he takes the limitations of certain mm. systems, but then replicates them in trackers. I can totally, totally yeah. get that from this. Like, like listening to your other show, which which I haven't heard from in a while, and I'm not going to bug you about it, but I would like to hear more from it. The, the Impulse Project, mm-hmm. um, it makes me like, I really have so much respect for the composers and artists and, and really engineers who are making this incredible music with limited hardware. But I love like, yeah, composers like Matt Creamer who are creating that music in that style, but in the way that you would like to remember it, you know? Yeah. Like, like, oh, I remember as a kid, it's sounding like much bigger than it really was. And so he's like, well, yeah, let's just, you know, add some reverb and, you know, add some uh, maybe real rock drums on top of this beat, you know? Right, right. And let's do it without having to worry about, you know, like reserving a channel for sound effects because that's going to be taken care of separately. So we're going to have exactly, all yeah. six of those channels ready to go. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to save like eight kilobytes for, you know, to load a, a picture of a dragon. We can use those eight kilobytes to add another, you know, little flourish. Hey, man, those pepperonis take up memory. <laughs> Yeah, so um, <laughs> I'm wondering then, did the uh, that pizza delivery guy took a wrong turn or no? He's this is the first stage. He's on a rowboat and he's got to take this across the oh uh, yeah across, yeah like, yeah across a lake maybe? yeah and he's got a he's got a tour guide a Caribbean tour guide Caribbean tour guide <laughs> and uh, helping him get across the lake to deliver the pizza. It's like midnight pizza to a bunch of like college stoners. Yeah. Well, maybe he's got to <laughs> deliver it to our next destination for our next track name, All right. uh, which is called Black Storm Lab. So maybe there's a bunch of hungry scientists waiting for their pixelated <laughs> pizza. <laughs> and we're going to listen to that right now. Be right back. Right, we're listening to Black Storm Lab from the game <laughs> from the game Xenon Valkyrie on our fifth blind listen here with Mr. Rob Nichols. Wow. What is happening here? Our our whole chip tune theory is just it's different now. This is this is like this is some FM synthesis going on. Yeah, I mean it's still technically chip, yeah. but I think that the composer isn't really focusing much on uh, any specific existing piece of hardware. And I mm. think he's just writing, he or she, sorry, uh, is just writing music yep. that fits what they want to compose. So Yes. I'm hearing the, 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 that ride symbol is, a, is mm-hmm. a completely new. And the claps. Um, sound. The, the hand clap, that hand clap. Just the claps. That is an 808 clap. Yes. If I ever heard one. And I love that sound. I, I like what's happening. Okay. At the very end, right before this track loops, it starts to go major. And I swear, this is like Tears for Fears. <laughs> something is, something, this is going to turn into like this 80s power ballad where it's like dark and sinister. Like the band is like, is Everybody like moving around. Everybody wants a Xenon Valkyrie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Oh my god! So like, yeah, like the lights are off in the um in the auditorium, and the band's playing, and then it starts to go major again. The crowd goes wild. They're gonna play their hit, you know, but then they loop it again. Right, just goes right back, and right. everybody's like, "Oh, I'm fine." We are black ship energy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what do you think is happening here? Okay, so it's laboratory, right? So I'm definitely, I'm still getting dark, stormy, cloudy vibes. I'm still getting an image. Of a of a building okay. that's very ominous, maybe with like, 
you know, very dark but glowing windows, like one glowing green window and one glowing red window, like different things are going mm. on. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe there's like uh, like uh, some sort of uh, creature that's off in the corner. He's shackled, but he's also clapping along with the song. You know, yeah. He's very. He's got very good rhythm. I like that. So he's just helping helping the song do its thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's the, yeah, they're like they're 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 performing experiments on these creatures, and they're trying to make them big and powerful to. I don't know, uh, overthrow a corrupt government, but it, they're really like saying, all right, just like they, they have the radio going on all day long and the, yes. and the creatures are just bored. And so they start to form their own like acapella group. Or maybe they're experimenting on them to make them better at rhythm games. Yes, because you have to be a monster <laughs> to love rhythm games. Nobody with a soul would ever like DDR. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think um, that the black black ship energy and then black storm lab? Do you think it's just coincidence they're near each other? Or do you think they're related somehow? Like, do you think maybe black storm is like the guy's name, like Jonathan Black Storm? Oh, maybe, or it's an organization. You know, like we are right? the Black Storm team. I don't, I don't know what that would mean, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also telling the all, all these are. I'm assuming these are like officially named. The tracks are named, like on, on the soundtrack, or the composer added them into the uh, the files somewhere. Either that, or, or Dan named them for the places that they play in the game. I don't, I don't know for sure. I do know they are accurate names, though. Okay, they are accurate names. Yeah, yeah. Somehow. Hmm. So. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm, I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm still gonna stick with action platformer. Me too. That maybe some puzzle like elements just because the music seems kind of contemplative this this might be this might be either um uh, an auto scrolling section where that's just trying to kill you real fast or it's a really short um cut scene do you think cut scene i got cut scene vibes from this for sure although i might also consider that it would be maybe a playable section that doesn't necessarily include enemies but it's kind of a walk up into the building you know mm -hmm. like when you're entering like dracula's castle and super castlevania 4 when you get those like violin swells and yes. it's kind of like a little yeah. bit more peaceful there's not too much enemies going on and then you get into the castle and things build up so maybe maybe that's the kind of feel i'm getting from this mm. part i'm getting a more sinister vibe from this where mm. like it's like the a cutscene where a character turns on you you know what i mean like uh yeah like a ninja gaiden where um you get shot the, the 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 lady cop shoots you. Irene shoots you in the back. What I, the? Yeah, I can't remember her name for the life of me. What a lousy ninja. Good God. Um. So okay. So our pizza delivery guy gets shot by Irene. Mm hmm. Pepperoni goes everywhere. Pepperoni goes everywhere. The creatures start eating it up, and they're clapping. They are they, yeah. loving it. Clapping along, and then there's one that's got a a ride symbol for some reason, and he's just like. Shh, 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 shh. Yeah, and it's the biggest one, right? It's the biggest one, and he is the boss. <laughs> I was helping you out there. <laughs> yes, you were, sir. Because what do we got coming up next? Boss battle. This is boss battle. I mean, this is not black ship energy. This is not the ancient tech forest. This is boss battle. We're going to battle some boss. No denying. All right, so anyways, really quick before we get into this, what are you expecting from this track? Okay, I'm expecting a track that Keyglyph would love. Yes. Where it is straight up like um minor dissonant sounds really fast arpeggiations um that bass is ascending really slowly kind of That's, a synth synth meets metal vibe yes but again that really hard grating fm sound maybe but really really fast you're describing my perfect pizza sir <laughs> They would never deliver it to you. You'd call them up and be like, yeah, so I want like really fast arpeggiation, like really dissonant sounding synths um, on extra cheese. Yeah, extra distortion, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that would melt the box, sir. We can't, we can't bring that to you. Oh, man, that's, that's, that was last week as a special. All right, let's hit boss battle. We'll be <laughs> okay, right back. All right.
Right, this is Boss Battle from the game Xenon Valkyrie, and not what I expected. Not This is, I mean, is it, I was expecting something completely different. Maybe it's just, um, I had like, I was just getting my mind all prepped for what type of game this is going to be. This is, this is different. This is really different. I ordered sausage and mushroom, and I got eggplant and celery. This is, you, you, um, uh, uh, the delivery guy comes to the door, but you have to answer riddles. And then you have mm. to, like, chase him through a maze to get your pizza. Like, there's some, like, there's more to this boss battle, right? Like, this is not, like, a room with Mega Man versus Air Man. Like, this sounds like a whole stage. It does. It, it actually kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, the Shovel Knight boss battle oh, songs. Okay, okay. You know, because they have really... Like several parts that kind of come in rapid succession, they get a little more intense towards the end where the loop comes. Like those arpeggios started swelling up right towards the end, and it's got kind of a dun 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 bum bum bum. Like what does that feel? I'm trying to like place that in some sort of musical genre. When I first started, I was thinking like for musical genre immediately, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, <laughs> the Ninja Turtles genre of music. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan of the classics. I am I am refined. Of um, course. It's, it's one of the I mean, I'm a little snooty, but Raphael's my boy. It's right up there between Amadeus Mozart and Tchaikovsky is Ninja Turtle music. Right. Right. Yes. I mean, it's it's kind of it's one of those things you can say like at a party and be like, "Oh, I'm a fan of Leonardo." And be like, "Oh, yes, yes, he's a fan of fine art." And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> "No." I'm a fan of fine farts, sir. Thank you. Fine. Yeah, fine farts. <laughs> <laughs> These are the jokes I came for. Um, what was I going to say? Okay, so I'm starting to feel like the style is kind of Western, Western composed. That's one of the questions I was going to ask, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know what to base that on because it does sound kind of modern, but I also feel like the composer's got a really good grasp on tracking, chiptune composing somewhere in this, even if this is not 100% tracked in a tracker. Mm-hmm. You know, or on leg- like on old school hardware, this 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 artist has a grasp on it because it's it's still limited sounds. There's still only like four or five channels of sounds happening. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not gonna say American. I'm gonna say maybe English, maybe German. Okay, okay. So some sort of European. Yeah. Um, German is interesting. I w- I was kind of leaning towards more UK, mm-hmm. English, especially with those arpeggios when the Japanese. Composers usually do. I mean, and, and of, of course, this is kind of a generalization because there's always room for right. exceptions. But right. we're, we're speaking from like the, the, our, our history of knowledge of past games that we've listened. Yeah, to. exactly. Yeah. So nowadays, when Japanese developed retro style games come out, the composers tend to compose to a specific chip. You know, it's like they'll compose for Nintendo or mm. Genesis or Mega Drive or whatever. You very rarely hear chip music that kind of goes outside the scope of an actual piece of hardware. Right. So that kind of drives me away from thinking that this might be uh, a Japanese developed game. It could be. Like a lot of the modern stuff from like Yuzo Koshiro, it's either like, yes, this was done on, on my PC 98 in my basement mm-hmm. that he never got rid of, or it's like a modern dance track that you would hear in the club, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, it's, like, it's one extreme or the other, but you very exactly. rarely hear a combination of the two. Yeah, totally. Totally. I think it's like maybe coming from that old school, like, like mindset of, um, composing for the, that those old systems like being like really feeling those limitations like why would you want to feel that again unless you were trying to force yourself into a creative workflow yeah so it's either like one way or the other so I don't know but you mentioned Shovel Knight yes uh, J- J- Jake Kaufman yeah like that's like that that last part of this track had that kind of like uh, like that kind of sinister kind of old school old almost old timey kind of like evil sound you know yeah, and, and even the first part was kind of, like, bombastic and had a lot of character to it. And yeah, it just, yeah. you know, I felt like that color palette kind of pop into my head when I heard the introduction to this song, or at least, like, the first half of this song. So, I don't know, it's just interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I'm moving further away from Shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of shoot 'em ups even the classic style, even, like, the old, old Shooter's, had tracks that generally lasted about as long as the stage. Yeah. So, uh, very yeah. rarely kind of looped around. So, And even so, I think they'd normally be a little more 
uh, upbeat, go, go, go than mm-hmm. this. These seem to kind of go up and down in, in their their moods a little bit more with you know distinct A and B sections that you don't normally really hear with shoot 'em up games. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I'll tell you this. I mean, this is this sounds like a game that I would like to play or watch a YouTube let's play of, which is yeah. more likely going to happen. Yeah, and I think you know at the end of the show we'll, we'll maybe watch, see if we can find some video of it, just so we can kind of. Uh, describe yeah. the game a little bit because I'm, I'm super curious now it's and gonna I'm sure I'm just going to get more and more curious as we go through the rest of these tracks <laughs> it's going to be like Dan's like twitch channel <laughs> <laughs> he's like the, he's like like the one like, here's my uh, no death run yeah exactly yeah yeah I, I did it the first time I played 14 minutes I only heard half the music that you're listening to <laughs> all right so let's go into our next one all right next track we have coming up is uh I think that's right deftos it's like yes. deftones without the N. yes this is where I'm thinking European, right? Because some of these, like these tracks, like um, uh, ancient tech forest. Yeah. Like it sounds. Sounds like a native English speaker would come up with something that cool. Yeah. So I mean, we'll, we'll probably see this later on, but it just sounds like they're just kind of mashing up some words, and yeah, that's that's where I'm going. All right. Well, let's see what Deftos sounds like. We'll be right back. All right. This is the track Deftos, Def, Deftos, or Defos with a, with a silent T from the game Xenon Valkyrie. Ed, this is so. This is this is different. This is again a little different, huh? This is again a little different. Like I said, these tracks aren't going in order, but they seem to be advancing in <laughs> yeah. chip technology as we go which is kind of strange it's kind of strange yeah that that um they got that kind of syncopated like bass stabs for the, the uh in the background yeah that is cool like that is i mean that's yeah i don't care who you are that's awesome and uh <laughs> and the, i don't know the other uh, the the lead synth is straight out of you know the final countdown was that Falco? No, Falco. No, that was Amadeus. That's Rock Me Amadeus. Thinking. Yes, Rock Me Amadeus. Yeah, Falco. I had that on. Um, I had that on a cassette tape when I was a Ooh, kid. I had it on a forty-five. What really? Did you still like little that, LPs? That you, you still have it? I do not. I wish I did. Oh. I wish I did. We used to go get haircuts in uh, downtown New Haven mm-hmm. every month or so, and we used to go to this really famous record store called Cutler's, which is on the uh, Yale campus, and they would have like this whole wall on the side full of cubbies of 45s of the latest singles that were out. My dad let us pick out one 45 each, so we amassed this kind of pile of little (laughs) 45 records with all our favorite songs on them. Oh man, do you you think that, like, I mean, like, that's clearly, like, kind of, like, silly pop, you know, fun, fun pop, like, synth music from the 80s, but do you think that maybe uh, uh, influenced, like, your tastes as you got into your teenage years? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, well, yeah, and, and, and even my brother and I, like, he was into metal when I was into like the new wave and the synth stuff mm-hmm. so I'd pick out stuff from Duran Duran and the cars oh, yeah, and he'd yeah. pick out Quiet Riot and Twisted Sister and and all that stuff so we were we were like hard set in our musical tastes wow. even as young as like you know five and eight so yeah, I remember I remember being really young really young in my bedroom I had a um, like a boom box and it was tuned to the radio and it was for whatever reason someone requested 
the theme song to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Mm. And it just fascinated me. Like the sound and the rhythm. And it's not a complicated song, but it was, it just became like, I just wanted to hear that all the time. That's the, and I oh think, yeah, song. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And I, th- I think that really got me more interested in techno music and in sampling and hip hop. Like it was just, I was like, this is what I want to get into. I think the grunge scene hit and I became a mopey teenager and the rest is history. It happened but. to all of us. Every <laughs> single one of us. <laughs> anyway, um, I think this is my favorite track. Yeah, I was so saying far. the same thing too. My my favorite part is yeah. definitely when the lead drops out and you just get the bass and the percussion. That's really really cool. I felt like those lead synth synth brass. I feel like that could have used maybe some aftertouch. It was a little harsh yeah. sounding. Yeah, I wonder why they didn't do anything to it. Mm. Maybe it was on purpose to, to have it cut through the mix. The kick drum really is set into that, that again, that syncopated, like hard staccato bass that's hip happening in the background, but it's there and it sounds really good. Yeah. Um, and that uh, the snare drum, which is a completely new sound um, to this whole soundtrack so far, again, it cuts through the rest. It's, it's the higher frequency, similar to that fakey trumpet sound. It's kind of like getting breadsticks with your pizza. Yeah, yeah. So you got... <laughs> oh, Ed. <laughs> we, uh, we're, you haven't had dinner yet, have you? I told you, man. I was going to work pizza into every single break. Somehow. <laughs> somehow it's going to happen. But it is. It is. It's like snappy breadsticks. <laughs> um, that's just cutting through the grease yeah. of that Well, you're pizza. using the breadsticks to hit the snare drum. So... <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't play with your food unless you're making music. Exactly, then you're making money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it doesn't sound like the Deftones at all. No, no, no. I don't know much about the Deftones, but I know that's not it. It sounds like <laughs> modern synth synthwave is what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Definitely had a more modern feel. Definitely is kind of cementing my not Japanese, but maybe more. I don't know. I'm kind of. You said European or UK. Yeah. I'm kind of aiming towards American. Maybe. Oh, really? Okay. I'm thinking maybe American, but I I don't know. See, I'm starting to think, because uh, this sounds like Time Cop 1983, and, and, and um, that dude's from, like, Sweden or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also kind of a like a burgeoning chip scene, like, in South America, too, that sounds a lot mm. like this as well. Okay, okay. So... Who knows? So um, we're still oh, confused. Oh, one other thing. You also mentioned that now you're thinking that there might be more than one composer on this soundtrack. Yes. Yeah, that was like the first thing I exclaimed. Yep. Like, there's more than one. Yeah. Like it's twins. Yeah, and, and I mean, it does sound like a couple songs do have that very kind of, I wish I was a Nintendo, but I'm not really like a Nintendo NES. And the other ones are just like, screw it, I'm not any sort of thing, I'm just going mm. to do what I want. So maybe that's two different composers each kind of uh, choosing their own instrument sets to compose with. Uh, for this game. Yeah, what got me on that track was I was thinking back on Hotline Miami and like that whole soundtrack has a feel to it. It's all kind of in a, in a tone. Very coherent, yeah. Yeah, but there's like there's six or seven composers yeah. and um, and they're all kind of working in their own way but it all kind of fits together. So it's been starting to make me feel like there's a few, maybe a few people working on this. Maybe. I'll subscribe to that. I'll subscribe also, to that. Also, Dan's a sneaky guy. He might have, uh, might have snuck it in on us. Mm. Oh, you think it's one composer? <laughs> I'll show you. It's an American and a South American guy. <laughs> and a Japanese composer. All right. Well, um, the next one sounds really upbeat. What's coming up next? Oh, uh, <laughs> Despair Personified. <laughs> Okay, well, we got to agree. This is a whatever this is. This is a dark game, or or they're fighting some real darkness. Right yeah, now. I mean, I'm feeling like a really like dark sci-fi feel. Just just based, not necessarily even based on the music, just based on the titles of a lot of these uh, songs or levels or whatever they are that we are uh, listening to right now. So right, right, right. Okay. All right. Well, let's experience despair personified. Uh, if, you, if we must, be right back.
All right, that was Despair Personified from the game Xenon Valkyrie. Mm, that was sad song. Very sad. Yeah. Very sad. Very little Mac just got knocked out and needs to get back into the fight. Although with the Mike Tyson's punch out, maybe there's a little more hope in that song because it's trying to get Mac to get back up again. But there's not a lot of hope in here. No, at all. No, no. A lot. I feel like we're getting a lot of really deep, dark, and sad cutscenes. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Okay. This could be a cutscene, but I was thinking maybe more of a game over screen, something like that. Oh. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. If it's if it's uh, doing like a, a classic style, like continue screen, for sure. Yeah. And we were oh. also um, talking about how that bass synth is, I guess it's the bass, it's the lowest instrument in the song, So, but it's really, like, really loud. Yeah, it's almost being used as a, as a lead instrument in this song, but yeah, it's like, they, it's like they mixed all the instruments for whatever the style of these tracks are and just left the volumes where they were. So it makes me feel like that's a piece of hardware that they're that they're using or where yeah, yeah. they're trying to emulate some kind of hardware, right? Yeah, or maybe the game does something to the music that needs a very heavy bass or lead instrument and then it kind of filters it. Maybe the song comes from tinny speakers in a building or something and and so it kind of huh. lowers that volume. I mean it's a long shot, but yeah, there could be a lot of sound effects um, mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, I, well, if this was a game over screen, I don't know what other sound effects there would be. Maybe like really uh, uh, staticky, like noise channel, like lightning and thunder. You know, this this game has a gothic feel to it. I think I'm going to say that right now. It's yeah, got a dark, okay. kind of gothic, um, cybernetic gargoyles thing going on. Uh, that sounds like one of my dreams come true. All right. Yeah. That was the theme of your wedding, wasn't it? Uh, You got it. (laughs) You got it. Um, This is the song that plays after I've eaten my last slice of pizza. Oh, I love it. (laughs) And there's no more left. Even the the breadsticks are gone. And that's what you also had at your wedding. Yes. Despair pepperonified. Oh, man, that's that's a sad pizza. (laughs) That's a sad pizza. Ah, uh, yes. All right, so let's move on to our next one. Yes. Uh, I think yes. maybe we need to get ourselves out of this pit of, uh, of despair here. So uh, next up is a track called Phoenix Wastes, although Phoenix is spelled F-H-O-E-N-I-X. I was going to say, was that you or was that... No, nope, that's the... I, I copied these directly from the okay. file names. Okay. So that's, that's how it's spelled, which is interesting. Um, so Phoenix, Phoenix is something raising. It's a positive thing, but yeah. then there's also wastes. Or maybe the F has something to do with a character in the game. Like uh, F is like Filbert. Filbert. Uh, Filbert Enix. His name is Filbert Enix. <laughs> <laughs> and it's F Enix wastes. Ooh. Yeah, long shot. Very long shot. But anyways, let's give it a listen. Maybe we'll have some more clues about it when we come back. All right. That was Phoenix Wastes from the game Xenon Valkyrie here on Our Blind Listen with Rob Nichols. 
Um, so this is totally just takes everything that Despair personified was and spins it around 180 degrees and sends it off into a rainbow-filled field full of daisies. Well, maybe not daisies. Uh, this is Radioactive daisies. Yeah, radioactive daisies. Uh, daisies that can kill you. <laughs> um, but you're having fun jumping over them. Yes. Uh, this is this is an adventure game, man. This, to me, immediately screams Journey to Silius. It screams Naoki Kodaka. Yep. Classic Sunsoft without the bass, but with some bassy things happening. So, but yeah, classic, classic Japanese composed um, NES action music to me. That's, this is coming in fast and hard, like level one style, getting you pumped. For sure. If the last couple of tracks that we listened to were composer B, I think this one is back to composer A. Yes. You know, the guy who wrote the first couple of of tracks that we heard. Uh, this one has a much more kind of traditional NES on steroids sound again and is kind of getting away from the you know MIDI or, or tracker oriented stuff that we were listening to before yeah and and um, it's got that traditional composition to it as well the uh, the mm-hmm. really heavy uh, melody I love I love the um, that high higher higher pitched almost kind of flute sound that comes in on the second second part of the song oh yeah 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 that kind of almost kind of reminded me of Kirby a little bit when that came yeah. in especially and it had like those softer arpeggiated uh, like harmonics in the background so um i was getting vibes off of that nice thick kind of a uh, triangle snare just lots of real nes throwbacks here this is probably the most classic sounding track so far that we've heard i think so if this is a side-scrolling action title like what kind of like what, what kind of speed of gameplay are you thinking about for the for this whole like based on what we've heard so far you're thinking like a like a run and gun like Russian attack Contra type thing, or maybe a Gunstar Heroes, or do you think more of um like La Mulana, like big adventure, lots of puzzle solving, like really tight action jumping and danger? I'm thinking maybe not run and gun, mm-hmm. but I'm thinking kind of a mid pace to fast, like a Shatterhand or something. Maybe more close combat, <laughs> yeah. not necessarily projectile. I was just thinking Shatterhand right now because we at Magfest we played a, a demo of an indie game called uh, Junk Puncher. <laughs> I saw that, uh, which which was amazing. <laughs> uh, I met the uh, the the composer and the uh, the artists and stuff, and they were they were really cool guys. It was so shatterhand like like that was their influence mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and this really makes me feel that who who, who did shatterhand wasn't that um ooh. iku mizutani yeah i think yeah, it was mizutani, yeah i think that's who yeah it was. so and this is kind of like that right it's kind of like big epic um action oriented music right it's got some of that that uh natsume flair to it for sure i'm feeling that absolutely all right so we're about halfway through the show here yes and so one thing that I, I kind of wanted to test out for these blind listens as a, as a I guess, a, a push in the right direction for our guessing is uh, I asked Dan to give us a little bit of a vague clue or a teaser about what we might be looking at. So I'll read what he wrote me. And he says, I hope the Wicked Witch allows you to enjoy some VGM as you begin to explore the deepest depths of VGM podcasting. Hopefully no Tundra will stop you from achieving your goal of sharing VGM with the world. What do you garner from that? <laughs> <laughs> what? What does that even mean? It's got like a... Why? Ah... It's got a Wizard of Oz reference. He's referencing the tundra. Which tundra? Deepest depths. So maybe this is an underground game. Underground fantasy. It's an underground fantasy. Underground fantasy with witches. Right. But not the cool fantasy with Ludacris. But <laughs> the uh, maybe like the... I don't know. I'm still... Was it, what what was it about some of this music that made us that made me think anyway futuristic? I think it was more the Maybe the sound, the naming of the tracks and stuff mm. that was futuristic, and that a lot of it was kind of Mega Man esque, especially like composer A that we're theorizing yeah. has kind of like a, that Mega Man kind of feel to it. So it was, the, it was an ancient forest, but it was the ancient tech forest. So tech forest. Oh, okay, cool. All right, I'm I'm kind of getting the feel for this thing now. I don't know what it is. Me neither, but we're getting there. And I, I so I'm feeling like witches, tundra. I'm getting kind of a maybe a Norse 
kind of a feel. Okay. I mean, with Valkyrie and everything. So maybe, maybe there is some kind of Nordic godlike environment here. Characters that have to do with that kind of mythos. I don't know. None of the uh, none of the song titles we've came across so far have really clued us into that kind of stuff. So um, not so much. But we are listening to them out of order. Yeah. So maybe maybe it'll make more sense later on. But even then, like it's like some of these sound like in between. Some of these sound like full on like uh, like classic game levels. Some of these sound like yeah. mid boss music. Uh, who knows? Exactly. So um, let's move on to our next one. Yes. And this one's got a very interesting name. It's called Gilga Cocoon. I I have no idea what you expect from this one. So. <laughs> not, not at all. Me neither. <laughs> all right. Let's take a listen. We'll be right back. Okay. This is the track Gilga Cocoon from the game Xenon Valkyrie and composed by someone or some group, some of people. This one, this one is very unique. This is very different from the last track, even though it's clearly the same sounds. Someone who, who composed this clearly knows how to arrange music for a band, like yeah, a full band. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, there's sections, there's little, like, little spots for drum fills, things break down and then build back up again um, in a very like kind of live type uh, arrangement and I'm really into that like I, I really like how that works together but how that works in a game I'm not I'm not so sure this is, this has to be a really story heavy action game mm-hmm I'm kind of feeling you there I feel like um, this track is a close relative of black ship energy <laughs> yeah right in that it's got that kind of caribbean cadence to it a almost bit. F- starting to feel like a, like an alberto gonzalez is like you know kind of an influence for these couple of tracks Ooh, i didn't even think that yeah a little bit of a bounce there bum, 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 bum. and then the like soloed arpeggio at the end was really interesting it almost felt like maybe this is like a cut scene or something, some sort of a story element. Because that, that feels like it's it changes up the song so much yeah. that if you were playing that as part of a level and then it kept looping, like that would just feel really out of place. Although, the fact that it dropped out for so long that when the instruments all came back in full at the end, it made it feel even like more of a grand resolution of the whole thing yeah. before the, re- the the loop happened. Yeah, I really like that. This is the most dynamic of all the tracks that we've listened to so far, especially like some yeah. of the like the, the first one that sounded had like had kind of like a classic kind of MIDI, classic FM like synth module sound to it. Like this is really, this sounds like really modern chip tune to me, like modern arrangement. Uh, when the when the heavy bass and the drums drop out, and it is just the the, the arpeggiations on its own, you can really hear the reverb yeah. on each of those little um, those little notes. 
that's really filling out the sound. I think that's what's making the sound really modern, is is those extra little touches that's been done in the mastering or the uh, you know in the post production part of doing this uh, the soundtrack. Again, Gilga Cocoon. Any idea on that one? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's a boss. Maybe it's some sort of a giant like moth that comes out of a cocoon Ooh, moth or something. Man. Yeah, big you know? moth, moth, moth thing. Uh, yeah. It's funny you said um, you said Crystalis right at the end of the like song where it yeah, was something about the sound which of is that. you know kind of another word for a cocoon. So <laughs> I was kind of making that <laughs> like a Crystalis. <laughs> yeah, something about the sound of that made me make me think of the game Crystalis, Crystalis, or I think it's Crystalis. Yeah, Crystalis, Crystal. Yeah, um, it's it's definitely is going that way. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with the multi composer theory because this is very different. Every everything's been very um, dynamic. If it is one composer, my hat's off to them because a sign of a really good film and game composer is how versatile they can compose different styles. So very cool. I, I almost kind of like almost have like three composers in my head at this point. There's the oh. like like the NES style Caribbean chip tune. There's like the Mega Man style NES chip tune, and then there's the FM-ish, MIDI-ish, whatever, yeah. you know, freestyle yeah, <laughs> chip like, tune. The like Euro synthwave guy also. Yeah, yeah. He's like, hey guys, can I join you and make some songs? Oh, maybe they are maybe they're all in a band together. Maybe. Maybe that's what maybe that's what we're getting. They just take turns making, you know, leading the the, the way on the on the song yeah, composition right? or like, something. Like how Anna Monaguchi did the music to um uh, the Scott Pilgrim game. You know, they they all have input onto the sounds and so Yeah. It's a collaborative thing. Yeah, maybe it could be. Hmm. Interesting. Welp, our next track has a word in it, which was also in Dan's little teaser there. Yes. This one's called Ivory Tundra. <laughs> I know, I'm really excited about this. <laughs> this sounds very nature and not a lot of tech, so hmm. maybe this will change up the way the song sounds. I don't know. We'll be right back. Alright folks, we are back. That was Ivory Tundra from Xenon Valkyrie. I almost wanted to say Xena Warrior Princess. 
<laughs> this is a standout track for sure. Oh, absolutely. What are your thoughts on this one before I start rambling? I, I don't even want to ramble. I just want to, I want to hear the song <laughs> over again. <laughs> like, this is, this is, this is a song you just rewind. Wow. I, okay. Like it, it's again, it's got a modern arrangement to it. Yeah. Like it's not exactly video gamey. Um, I mentioned Yusuke Koshiro Misty Blue because it, it's mm-hmm. got a pop song kind of aspect to it but like not a modern pop song like a 90s pop song it's like ivory tundra is like it's like it's like the name of uh my ivory tundra is like the heart you know it's like he's, he's talking about how his heart's made of ice and and then the woman like pierces the the ice it's like the tundra has been frozen for so long yeah. and like she's melting the permafrost <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. It's, 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 I mean, we can work on these lyrics for the rest of the episode. Girl, you are my global warming. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is this is a great song. I, get, I don't think it loops. It might loop. It, it sounds a lot like credits music, but if it's credits music called Ivory Tundra, it's starting to make me feel like like Ivory Tundra is the name of the band. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe it's the name of a club. Or something that they uh, go oh, to. Oh, cool. I mean, you know? every one of these track titles could be the name of a band. Like a really cool band. Yeah, yeah, true. Except Boss Battle. Well, I mean... Yeah. Well, true. I mean, in in the Scott Pilgrim universe, it could definitely be a band called Boss Battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So, again, I, I love I love that sound. It's, 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 again, we're going back to that kind of fakey... NES C64 kind of sound, which I'm into, but there's more just more drum sounds to it, more clear drum sounds going on there. More drum sounds, it's definitely veering very, very far from that classic chip sound and, and more towards, uh, I don't know, more like a, um, I guess, regular indie kind of game sound. Not really trying to be any one particular era. Uh, very classic game music. As you were saying, like this doesn't feel like side-scrolling action it feels like this might take place in more of like an adventure like maybe a point and click kind of a thing like as soon as you said that like i started thinking about like because I'm, I'm in the middle of playing 2064 read only memories right now yeah. you know you're very familiar with two mellows work he did the soundtrack for that and that kind of felt maybe a little bit like this kind of stuff it's a little bit jazzy um very retro very 90s sounding mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. i got a lot of that from this you know what? We had the same thing with Nova Storm that I did with the Dyad, where every song was kind of like <laughs> yeah. just a little bit different. I mean, that had some weird, wacky sound effects that were kind of built into the songs, which threw us off. But this one is is really kind of like you don't know what you're going to hear next. It's not a it's not a steady, solid, coherent soundtrack at all. No. It's all really good stuff, but it's leaving you wondering: like, are these different sounds because of different types of gameplay or different? You know, one's a cutscene and one's an action part. You know, who knows? Maybe this is midpoint in the game, and it's like the love theme up between some characters in this game, right? Like, like it's it's punctuating like a really like how how uh, one of like the really darker ones that we heard before, despair personified, might punctuate like a really dark moment. This is punctuating a romantic moment to me. This is mm, yeah, it's got that okay. kind of feel to it. I mean, I could see meeting a love interest, and her name is Ivory Tundra. Ooh, I like that. I mean, that's secret agent, you know, kind of thing going on. Yeah, Agent Ivory Tundra. Exactly. Um, undercover as a pizza delivery, maybe. Yeah, she's delivering pizza to the tundra. She's delivering death, <laughs> uh, or, or you know, or, or frozen pizzas. Could be either one. Maybe she's delivering it to the Alibo moon base, which is coming Ooh. up next. See, so now this one is definitely not a character name and more of a location. So you've got a moon base mm-hmm. after having uh, ancient tech forest. So maybe we're moving off world. Oh, maybe this whole thing is off world. Maybe there are lots of different, maybe everyone is a different planet or something. So who knows? But oh, interesting. this is a base on a moon called Alipo, O L I P O. We shall return. Okay.
All right, we've returned from Alibo Moonbase. I was very happily surprised at this one for mm. sure. So we're still getting different. This is like back to composer A again. I think I don't know. I'm up to like four different composers in my head at this point, which I think is way too many for a game like this. But yeah, definitely back to that Japanese action game. Uh, Natsume Shattered Fist style soundtrack. What'd you What'd you think, Rob? Totally. Um, this it's it, because it's also incorporating some of the sounds that were in some of the other tracks, but not not in all of them. It's starting to make me feel like maybe there's different sets of levels in this game, and and the music is kind of evolving along with the game. Like as mm. as you progress, suddenly you start hearing more of that kind of higher pitched flute sound in in the music you know okay or or these like there's a um different specific chapters of the game that are punctuated with action sequence maybe a cool slower down like kind of dark sequence and then a cut scene and then something that leads into the next one which is a action sequence now i'm thinking about it that's a cool way to (laughs) that's a great way to pace out like an action game that is actually a really good idea yeah you can pull it off for sure and that would really help you make like a soundtrack that's very kind of dynamic um, without needing to necessarily build it in segments, you can just compose music for each of those parts. Right, right. So were you saying that the music might be dynamic in this game, like that high flute would come in during certain segments, like depending on what your character was doing? Or did you mean that it's just something that would just loop on a constant? No, yeah, I, I don't I don't think the music is programmed dynamically. I, I, I really don't think so, based, based on the way it's looping itself. Yeah, I don't think so either. But I'm thinking like it's like the game overall is played like... After the first four stages, something happens, and and your characters are now okay. You know, now you have a team of pizza delivery people, right? And and so the music evolves, and you have more instrumentation. And then there's a there's like a uh, there's a pepperoni shortage, <laughs> and you have the to pep- visit the moon base <laughs> because obviously the moon is made of cheese, and so therefore you have to gather your mozzarella resources, <laughs> and. <laughs> Stuff it into as many breadsticks as you possibly can to make it back home. Cheese force. Cheese force. On the showdown on the moon. Yes. Pe- pepperoni showdown on the moon. <laughs> wow, that's... We're back to the Ninja Turtles again. I don't know how we got back there. It always goes back to the Ninja Turtles. You live and die by the Ninja Turtles. It's its own genre <laughs> we of music. Live. We die. We live again <laughs> as Ninja Turtles. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking that this... You know, it's like every every song, I'm like, oh, so okay, so maybe this is an adventure game. And then this track plays, and I'm like, this is definitely a side-scrolling platformer. And then another track plays, and I'm like, this is just sad. Like, why? <laughs> this doesn't belong in a platforming game. So, right, right. Um, I'm, I'm like, the farther we get through this show, the more I'm like getting impatient to have all of this make sense you know yes yeah i really want to see this come together and it's it's bothering me now is what it's doing because <laughs> i'm really enjoying this music like it's it's really good yeah yeah absolutely and uh i'm looking forward to listening to this more like with context once we figure out what the game is all about and and totally. see if the music sounds different to me after that so with that said let's move on to our next track rob what's up next uh, next track is called prime reactor so uh, I guess we're on Mars, and we have to start the reactor. <laughs> maybe, maybe, um, maybe it's a Transformers level. Ooh, I like it. All right, so Prime <laughs> Reactor coming up next from Xenon Valkyrie. Yes, you got it. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is the track Prime Reactor from the game Xenon Valkyrie. And wow, so we're back again onto those um, pulsing square waves and some really interesting melodies kind of playing off of each other and really interesting rhythms too. I mean, like it's it's a 4-4, but the way the, the, the melodies are bouncing off the rhythms, it's really interesting. Like this is a really interesting track. Um, you said you put these kind of out of order, but the, the the progression of the music that we've been listening to has been like slowly becoming more complicated, slowly becoming a, a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what, what do you think? I, I, I totally agree with that. I, f I feel like I would love to hear this song with like live instrumentation. I feel like some really chuggy like detuned guitars would go really well with that bass line. Oh. That'd be cool, yeah. This would be like a like a tool song if you did it like that. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and we were commenting on kind of like the 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 mishmash of different chip sounds. So we're we're yes. looking at like very Nintendo style square wave lead with like a, a sawtooth bass instead of a uh, triangle, which may be more like a Game Boy in a sense, because it did have that programmable channel that could do like sawtooth stuff. Yeah. So I guess so, that works there. But then the, the percussion was completely sampled. So, yes, but, it, but it's but down sampled. So it's like it's being pushed through right. like some kind of bit crushed, you know, again, like two bit, four bit situation. Yeah. And we were getting some serious Dave Wise vibes at the beginning too. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder if our, our, any of our listeners caught the David Wise Influence. Agreed. I'm starting to think that this was produced on an LSDJ outputted through like a whole bunch of outboard gear. Like they took whatever they were using for the bass and they stuck it through like some kind of distortion, like compressor. Oh, maybe. And then on some of the uh, other square waves, they stuck like a reverb onto it. But I'm starting to think that this is either like Fama Tracker or it's like on legitimate hardware, but then just. Um, has post post processing onto it. That's a pretty good theory. Uh, that would explain a lot of the kind of limitations on those lead instruments as well, because the chippy instruments aren't doing anything that are really outside of what it could normally do on normal hardware. So I completely agree with you there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and there are, it's still limited a number of voices that's being played at one time. So maybe that's what's going on. I mean, honestly, like. Maybe they wanted to have limited voices because that's how they're used to working, or um, it helps them compose more creatively. Like, I, I totally get that. Yeah. But then when going into the game proper, they wanted to make it sound a little bit more modern, a little bit more exciting. Yeah. And um, I'm into it. This is, I think this is one of my favorite tracks so far. I like it a lot, too. I'm thinking, I think it was Ivory Tundra that's my favorite so far. I remember that being oh, pretty yeah, that was, dynamic. Yeah. Um, I enjoy that one. But let's talk a little bit about the name Prime Reactor before we move on to our next track. How, how does the name feel when paired with a song like this to you? Prime Ooh. Reactor. Well, the, yeah, this song really does tell kind of a story of like that kind of that, that, that pulsing bass at the beginning is kind of like an entry. And then I'm, I'm feeling like there's a team of, of people and they're trying to start the reactor on the Alipo moon base. Ooh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> and like, and maybe they're 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 sneaking past guards. You know, maybe this this could be like a either a section of the game that's uh, kind of stealth oriented. It's the it's the scientists from the Black Storm Lab on the Alipo moon base trying to start the prime reactor. Right, right. So that they could fire up the ovens to make some more pizzas. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it on home, Rob. That's why I love you so much. Oh, I love you too. And uh, and that little monotone <laughs> bass line at the beginning could easily be like uh, some sirens, you know, like an alarm system going off. Maybe they've broken into yeah. the area or something. If that's the case, that's really cool that they would in they would incorporate maybe uh, the sound effects or what you would hear um, within the context of the game into the music. I mean, if that's the case, then that's super awesome. Like, I love the idea of creatively putting that you no, know, proactively, like like putting what you believe would be in the game into the music. It's it's like looking ahead. It's 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 being smart about the composition rather than just here's what the stage is going to look like. It's this kind of game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, this is this is really well put together. I think Emily talked about this on I think it was the last episode. Dia diagenic music, dia something like that, where the 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 music is part of the scene where the characters 
that you're playing as will actually be hearing those sounds right. as you're playing through the game, as opposed to like the Mega Man 2 music, where it's just background music. That, but you don't re- you don't think that Mega Man's actually listening to the music as he's going oh, through yeah, the stages. Yeah. So one of, one of my favorite things in like in TV shows or in movies, it's like if there's a character driving or they're so, or, they, or they're like at home and there's, there's like a soundtrack to the movie playing in the background. Yeah, and then suddenly you realize that they're 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 listening to something in their headphones or it's something from like a tape deck, and they turn it off, like Baby Driver, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Or they turn it down and then like suddenly what was just the soundtrack for the viewer of the movie is actually the soundtrack for the character within the movie yeah yeah i love that stuff that that i don't know it's just, i think it's probably it's probably like a super cheap way to get me like you know deeper into the the movie but i think i think it's a, a successful thing to it's do. it's excellent if it's done well sometimes it can kind of overpower the scene but sometimes when you don't realize that it's actually in universe until like you said like some some character addresses it yeah that's a really cool kind of mind bend um, so that would be cool if it was something like that for this game as well. So let us move on to our next track, Proto Borealis. Yes, uh, I'm imagining uh, obviously the Aurora Borealis is some wavy colors in the sky over the uh, North Pole. So maybe this is some sort of wavy energy beam or yeah, something. The, the Aurora Borealis was originally based off of the Proto Borealis. <laughs> Yes, maybe the Aurora Borealis is just computer code in the sky, and this is the, the, the beta version of it. Oh, maybe this game is all about like living in a simulation. Oh, or the creation of the Earth via mm. computer code. I like where you're going. We're getting deep here. <laughs> all right, let's take a listen. We'll be right back. That was Proto Borealis from the game Xenon Valkyrie, mm. our blind listen of the day, submitted by Mr. Dan Lawton. Yes. Heroic AF. Very. Um, I feel like this would be either towards the very beginning of the game mm. or very close to the end of the game mm. where the heroes like, I mean, because we've got that track like Despair Personified, right? That's got to be <laughs> very far removed from wherever this track plays. In the game, yeah, this is definitely the antithesis of the despair uh, track. This to me sounds like the ending of a stage or the ending of a section of stages, you know? Yeah, like, like, yeah. like a Mega Man gets Mega Buster thing, you know? <laughs> um, so I'm starting to wonder if these names even have anything to do with the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they did. They do. They are locations, so I, I do feel like they absolutely will play in those locations. But but again, I don't know if. Dan applied those names to these files based on the locations or whether this is what the composers actually called their songs for the soundtrack or what. So Mm. I guess we have to take all of those kind of theories with a grain of salt. Um, But I'm really digging the heroic vibe in this. Those two lead square channels are just in constant harmonization. It feels very rich and full. It uses the same kind of percussion that the last track did. So we've got that kind of douche Kind of a <laughs> really kind of heavy a on the uh, heavy on those toms as the uh, snare. Yeah, which is and pretty the, cool. Uh, a real kind of a thick, crunchy like ride cymbal that's kind of really leaned on a lot as well. We're seeing that more and more. Um, we're hearing that more and more in these tracks, which I feel like adds a lot more depth to them. You know, if you only had just just the toms and the snare, uh, it would be kind of flat. So it adds a little bit more texture to the track, which is cool. And this one's it's kind of short. It sounds like it could loop, but it's it's a short, shorty little, little like a uh, riff. Although this, if this were like the end of a stage, it could be a much, much shorter riff and still would have been successful. But it's 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 fleshed out into more of an idea 
a more of a composition, which I think is cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so Proto Borealis, as a name itself in the game, I, it doesn't really give us much clue as to where it might appear or what it might be. Um, I mean, there's a, so is a, there's a track called Ivory Tundra, mm -hmm. which is obviously uh, would take place in some sort of a wintry area. So a Borealis, Aurora Borealis, would take place in a wintry area. So maybe these levels are kind of back to back with each other. These tracks would play back to back with each other. So oh, yeah, yeah, I bet you're right. Kind of yeah. trying to put like a, like put it together like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, this links to that, which links to that. Who knows? I don't know. You wanna you wanna listen to our next one and see if we get any more clues? Yeah, yeah. So our next one is Thul Wultz Grotto. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sure. That sounds pretty good. Um, <laughs> so Thul Wiltz Grotto from Xenon Valkyrie. Let's go. You're listening to <laughs> Thule Waltz Grotto from Xenon Valkyrie. And wow, the layering of those sounds. It's, it's some, it hasn't happened in any of these other tracks before. All of these tracks are doing something just a little bit differently. Some have more staccato sounds. Some have more melody. Some have more percussion. And this one's got this layering that hasn't happened in any, other, any of the other tracks. It's really cool. You're very layered, but a lot of groove and more minimal melody it's funny how some of the more minimalist compositions have a lot more melody in them mm -hmm. where some of the more rich sounding compositions are more groove and usually it's kind of the other way around right. you know with a minimalist composition it's usually like a bass line and some drums and maybe some twinkly keys but we're, we're getting kind of the opposite here which is a really cool kind of choice to to use for a game I like, again, there was some David Wise influence, it seems, yes, yes. at the beginning there. And then toward, towards the end where those uh, those very twinkly arps came in, that was yeah. really, really nice sounding. I like that. That's that's becoming more of a theme in the uh, these other tracks, too, where like as the as the tension builds up or as the, as the song's reaching more of a crescendo, you're hearing these arps in the background. It's making me think that the uh, the the musician has a classical background, okay, or is is classically trained, or was has some has some training in a in a traditional instrument. Started as a as a as a pizza delivery guy, and then worked his way up through the orchestra. Right, exactly. Like maybe he grew up and his parents made him play violin. Then as a teenager, he picked up the guitar, and then as a young adult, picked up the Game Boy. And after that, picked up whatever it is this is that we're listening to <laughs> several digital audio workstations at the same time <laughs> exactly something something's going on here um maybe maybe not multiple game boys but it's it's all being processed very very differently yeah yeah the, the bass sound i'm starting to feel like um um the artist chipsel she does this, this amazing stuff with the uh, the wave channels out mm. of the game boy that makes like a really deep heavy bass sound not quite like this but it's very similar and um, there's another artist, I think it's his name is Inverse Phase. Yep, I'm familiar with both of them. I'm getting that kind of vibe from that guy. I'm, I'm not positive, of course. Uh, Chipsel, I feel like her compositions are a little bit more, not complicated, but there's more going on. 
And this 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 soundtrack's a little bit more stripped back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chipsel's from she's from the UK, isn't she? I think. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Inverse phase is from Baltimore. Right. So, so we had an American and a European. So that kind of follows with what we've been thinking. So yeah, yeah. But yeah. we're also thinking David Wise, very Wiseian. Yeah, yeah. I'm not seeing. I mean, I'm seeing Wise influence, but yeah. I think we would if if this were a real Dave Wise composition, we'd be like. Yes, that's wise. His his chip mm. stuff is very easily recognizable. So yes, well then, then that's the thing. Then so if this artist was influenced by David Wise, does that maybe give us an insight into what this game is like? Oh, because David Wise composed for a lot of side scrolly games. That's true. That is very true. Okay, putting it together. Okay, and uh, and so Grotto <laughs> Grotto is not anything like usually. It's a Kind of like a little jungly, kind of like a watering hole, like a little area near a body of water, right? Am I thinking of the right kind of topography here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's kind of where I'm at. So it's a very different climate than where you might find a Borealis yeah, or the Ivory Tundra. So this game definitely takes you to a lot of different kinds of climates, both on the planet and off the planet, if we're assuming that the Olipo moon base is a moon that goes around the planet that you start on. Mm -hmm. uh, but Thor Woltz, I mean, that, that looks like a German name. Or yeah, yeah, I think it's German pronounced words. Thule, if I'm not mistaken. Did you see those ski racks? It's spelled the same way, T-H-U-L-E. They make, like, sports equipment, and that's pronounced Thule. Oh, so. okay, okay. So, all right, so here we are. We're in the north again. So we're in the north. There's some kind of reactor. We're going up to the moon. Um, so this is a very cold game. Perhaps, perhaps. And oh. that was that was part of uh, Dan's little teaser halfway through the show where he said something about making your way through the tundra with some witches. Oh, right. That's right. There's witches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm deeply confused. Yeah. I, I, I cannot wait to, to see at the end of this what we're talking about. Yeah, speaking of which, we're coming through the home stretch here. So... Yeah, we've, got, we go. we've got four more tracks, which are basically uh, the eponymous uh, song called Xenon Valkyrie. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this because like it's this this is the it's like the title track on an EP. <laughs> kind of gives you an idea of like what the band yeah, is about. Yeah. Like I want to know this. Yeah. yeah, and then then we've got a final boss battle, a bad ending, and a good ending. So we are kind of oh. like coming down the home stretch to get those last uh, kind of theories in before we finally pull back the curtain and read Dan's testimony. So. I'll, I'll tell you this though. So there's only one boss battle song, and there's one final boss battle mm -hmm. song. So there's all, and there's a lot of music. So it's repeating the same boss battle track. So it's just very, it's very much on that classic video game style. Oh yeah, of music. But but there's two different endings. So this is, I don't know, man. That's like a Streets of Rage. Type yeah, thing yeah, yeah. Or here. it could be a, like yeah. a different path you could choose. You know, you mm -hmm. get a you get a choice between going to maybe Proto Borealis or the Ivory Tundra, two wintry areas, and then depending on which way you All go, right. you get a good or a bad ending. Who knows? Thunder Thunder Force Four had a bunch of uh, different endings too, depending on how well you did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, let's listen to Xenon Valkyrie from the game Xenon Valkyrie. Mm. Welcome back, boys and girls. That was the track Xenon Valkyrie, which we are assuming would be the title theme track from the game Xenon Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. uh, especially the way this one ends, it feels like it has a title screen kind of a feel mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the music ends, it goes silent for a little bit, and then maybe goes into a demo of the game or something like that. But very heroic kind of vibe, very kind of uh, like a, I keep wanting to go to like the Natsume, like Shatterhand, Power Blade kind of games. It has that kind of Ikumizutani feel to it to me. Definitely. For me, I'm still getting the 
mean, a little bit of David Wise, but then like with these tracks, I'm getting Naoki Kodaka like all the way. Okay, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The very much the um, Journey to Silius type mm-hmm. sound, a little bit of Batman. But yeah, but that, again, those those tracks are a lot like Yukumi Zatani too. You know, very very classic NES. You know, Japanese. You know, side scrolly game. I like saying side scrolly. 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 <laughs> on uh, on 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 previous shows, I've just kind of classified that music as quote unquote Japanese action game music. There you go. Yeah. Because it doesn't really seem to fit a genre that exists outside of video games. You know, it's a very specific kind of composition. It really is. It's like the mixture between anime music and like rock music of the nineties. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I always imagined Naoki Kodaka was like a into guitar, you know, he like he was shredding and, and writing all his tabs down and then trying to translate that to the Famicom. <laughs> Uh, an interesting thing about that, and I know this is kind of a, a, a going off the rails a little bit, but the sample channel on the NES could only produce uh, certain notes, and yeah. it wasn't it wasn't in and like an evenly spaced scale. So you could only you had to basically pick out which like randomly almost arbitrary notes that the bass line could do, and then write your song around those oh, bass notes. Right. Oh, b- b- based on the Sunsoft. Uh, bass samples. If you're, yeah, yeah so exactly. Na- Naoki Kodaka would be doing that kind of thing. Yeah. I've also read that the the higher higher up on the pitch that you go on the Famicom, the less certain you can be to get those higher notes. Yeah. So it can only go so high. I thought that was really interesting too. Just these weird limitations of you know analog, not analog hardware, but like of the PSGs at the time and, and things like that. Not right? yeah. going so digital. I digress. This is I love that there's two intro songs and then there's this, which had a definite ending. You know, and I'm imagining like a, like a really cool like Nintendo explosion sound on that on that last <laughs> note. Yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. I'm into that. I like this. This is like getting you prepped for a cool action game, and um, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I think, uh, and it, it does a really good job at kind of setting up the sound for the game oh, yeah. too, um, because you've got all the instrument channels kind of blasting at you at the same time. Uh, there's a little bit of tempo up and down but for the most part it's kind of a full bore really exciting excitable kind of track so um speaking of excitable tracks i think we should listen to final so so, from the files that dan gave me it's called final boss battle one Hmm. but there's no final boss battle two or anything else with a numerical yeah. designation. We might have already listened to the final boss battle too. It just was named something differently, maybe more relevant to the game. Very good point. Mm. Very good point. All right, so let's take a listen and we'll see what we think. gosh this is the final (laughs) boss battle one i am so into this music like as it just kept building and building me and ed were just looking at each other going yeah yeah (laughs) Uh, yeah keep Keep going going. keep going and it just keeps adding more and more to it this is so good this is so good like this this is like how when they give you an ending theme that makes the whole game worth it because it's so good right this is like getting to the final boss battle must 
must feel amazing. It must feel so good. It must feel really kind of stressful at first because like the A section of this song is super creepy and you've got yeah. like those those Michael Meyer like Halloween kind of like John Carpenter do 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 like really creepy kind of you know tension building music mm -hmm. and then once that kind of like builds up to a climax then it comes down with this heroic track that start it's almost feels like two different songs oh it does yeah and then that keeps building up with new instruments like a, that that lead instrument was kind of like a enhanced like triangle wave kind of it sounded really really nice might have been like a doubled up triangle wave or a triangle wave with a sawtooth it's it's there's definitely some extra stuff going on there like something something mix matched but yeah that that opening just like that other boss battle it's a bit slower which makes it's starting to make me feel like this isn't such a fast paced game something is paced like there's there's pacing just hmm. these stages or there's pacing to these bosses but then into that second section everything goes double time and that's when i start to feel like okay this is boss battle music yeah because tra traditionally the boss battle music is like really fast it's it's like it's usually it's heavy it's heavy. scary sometimes yeah, yeah. <laughs> i couldn't think of the word but yeah yeah it's just this is fantastic i i really like it and the the change up at the end it's still it's still kind of in that minor key, but it feels like it feels like a progression. It feels like you are getting somewhere, and it feels like you're you're pushing through. And I love that it loops back around to, to the slower section again. That that's so cool. This is really great soundtrack. Absolutely, and and the looping aspect of this is interesting for me too because it's gonna you're gonna get depending on how long the boss battle is, you're gonna mm. get periods of scary and periods of heroic, and they're gonna keep kind of flip flopping. Yeah. And I, I doubt that that, I mean, it's possible that the boss would change its behavior based on the music, maybe more like dynamic gameplay as a, with a static progressive of music rather than the other way around. But Could be. I feel like that would change the, the mood of the player a lot as well. It would kind of feel like a push and pull of who's the dominant person in yeah. this room you know the boss or me <laughs> the boss or me back and forth and back and forth so like if it's taking you that much longer to defeat the boss or the level like the 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 tension's ramping up you know yeah yeah and so it's it just feels really good i, I love i love the way everything came together it was even the melody at the very end it's, it's surprising i wasn't expecting those notes and I really like that because a lot of times, especially with some of the earlier tracks, like the heroic tracks and the, even the creepy tracks, like you kind of know where that melody is going to go. You know what that next note's going to be. Mm -hmm. This was completely out of left field for me. I really enjoyed it. Agreed. Very much agreed. All right. So we've got bad ending and good ending <sighs> left. Do you want the bad news first or the good news first? <laughs> well, let's, give me the bad news, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then we'll listen to bad ending. We'll be right back. I'm so sorry, boys and girls, you've earned the bad ending of Xenon Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is a track where there's definitely a visual component, uh, some sort of a sequence, because it's there's like three movements to it, right? So yeah, you start, it's, yeah. you get these kind of uh, very kind of creepy, almost Dracula-like 
organ pieces going behind this very, very thick bass line. Yeah. Um, the ending's a little more upbeat. Maybe that's where the credits roll or something like that. Or like, you know, there is some hope. You've you've just got to do something different to get the good ending next time. I don't know. What's your what's your opinion on this one? I'm, I'm guessing here that the first... There's, there's like three parts to this thing. So the fir- those first two parts are probably going to happen no matter what ending you get in this game. Okay. And what we're going to hear last, which would be the good ending, is probably the full ending piece with the credits and a whole bunch of nice stuff that's going on. Uh, but this is, is, you know, you get the first two parts and then bad stuff actually happens. Bad stuff. Which you, I gotta tell you, man, that stuff kind of, it, it makes me mad, you know, because you, you fought the boss battle. You know, you beat the boss. You did all that work. And then what, what? You didn't do it fast enough? Come on. Right, right. <laughs> or, you know, yeah, and, and some games are very, very cheap like that. Or if you play it on the easy mode, you don't get to see the real ending or something like that. I mean, come on. But uh, I, we can have a, probably a whole new conversation about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that totally. And that comes down to preference, too. But I, I, again, I like this. It's, it, it's very choreographed, yeah. which is cool. Again, it's telling more of a story, which is, again, leading me to believe the artist has some classical... Um, training or some, you know, some actual, like traditional training in music. I agree. Or has studied, you know, traditional VGM quite extensively, mm. you know, because it does carry a lot of those tropes. That's and, true. Uh, and so, I, you know, either way, it's Ward's combination of the two. But, you know, as a, as a bad ending, I feel like it's got some positivity to it. So maybe it's not like, uh, maybe it's like, you know, you save the day but you yourself had to be sacrificed along with it. You know what I mean? So okay, maybe the good yeah. ending is you save the day and then you also get to get away unscathed. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like Thanos where it's like, you saved the day, but yeah, the world ended. Half but the population will... has died. <laughs> yeah, but then like in the background, you see like a little flower pop up on the earth or something and you're like, but there's still life. I'm like, yeah, but all your <laughs> friends are dead. Um, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I don't know. They could, this could go very dark. It could be kind of cartoony. I don't think this game is super cartoony. I think this game has some serious elements to it. Yeah, no, I agree. I I, I haven't felt any sort of levity or no, yeah, cartoonish elements at all for this. Absolutely. Mm. All right. So, are you ready to test your theory with that good ending track? Yeah, I need something good, Ed. So give it, give it, give me the good, good after this bad, bad. <laughs> all right. So we we've just eaten the um the anchovy and onion pizza, and now we're gonna yeah. move on to the toppings that we really actually enjoy. <laughs> Okay, let's do it. (laughs) All right, let's hit it.
Thank you for playing. That was the good ending from the game Xenon Valkyrie. And that was a journey. That was a journey through all of its themes. It was a journey through a little bit of the uh, the, the, the final final boss battle in there. A little bit. Yeah, this is great. I, I love it. I love it when things are a bit of a medley of of all the themes throughout the game. Maybe not every level, because there's a lot of a lot of levels, but looks like a lot of levels um, in this game, and a lot of themes too. But it really brought everything together and then brought it on home right to the very end. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, for sure. I feel like everything was kind of an amped up version of what we've listened to so far in the game. Mm-hmm. Your working theory is that um, so some of the tunes from the bad ending would play first. Yes. Or you would get that kind of sequence, and then you would get this as the credits roll and the credit rolling kind of montage would be kind of the reward for for getting the good ending my new theory is that you get both endings okay that this, okay it's just it's just a sequence that bad ending is like a choreographed something that happened yeah and then the, and then it sort of like builds up towards the end and then the good ending is everything's all right here's the credits and it, and it kind of gives you a little bit of everything i feel that it's it's i feel like it's too good and it's too long to hold back from the player. You know what I mean? That's what she said. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I do agree. And as you were, or as we were listening to that kind of, uh, where the, it kind of almost goes double time at the end of the yeah. sequence and you're like, thank mm-hmm. you for playing. And yeah, I could definitely envision the the logo of the game developer kind of come up through the bottom of the screen with uh this game was brought to you by blank and blank and you in large capital letters you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally so i think we're both in agreement this is a this is a modern it's a uh, modern in that it came out at least in the last five to ten years maybe yes yeah yeah so definitely. so let's yeah let's look at our kind of fill in the blanks here okay We'll try to come up with at least some ballpark guesses for a lot of these. And then we'll uh, I will read Dan's testimony. Okay. And then we'll both go look at some gameplay from YouTube and then come back to the recording and kind of talk about what we what we saw. Oh, cool. So it's kind of like a VGM Bissy Mad Libs. Essentially, yes. Fill in the blanks. <laughs> yes. So I need a noun for composer. <laughs> oh no. Share. <laughs> Um, all right, so, <laughs> so I love lamp. Um, all right, so so you mentioned chipsel and inverse phase. <laughs> Sorry, it's like I'm like in that my brain's in that mood. All right, yeah, chip, uh, um, yeah, it, chip, not chipsel, but inverse phase is kind of that style where I'm going. If I'm going to make a guess, I'm going I'm to go there. Okay, okay, I'm I'm kind of yeah. with you on that. I'm I'm with. Like you said, uh, uh, an American or a European, but I'm still leaning more towards an American mm-hmm. uh, chiptune composer. Maybe this doesn't really have much of a demo scene feel to it. So I'm thinking somebody who's made more of their career in VGM than yes. demo scene. Yes, uh, or more of their career in chiptune, like modern chiptune. At the beginning, I was going more European. Um, now I'm definitely American because I feel like American chiptune composers are more influenced by classic Japanese yes. video game yeah. music than, 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 than are, for the most part, I know I'm, I'm generalizing, than like the European and uh, you know British and all that. Right, so. right. Well, because the Europeans yeah. grew up on mostly the Amiga and the C64, so that was mostly the European composers, whereas we had the NES, yeah. and it was mostly Japanese composers, so that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Platform. I mean, with a modern game, it could be literally anything. I mean, I know most of the Nintendo Switch library, and I know and this doesn't feel like a game that would have come out on, like, PS4 or... Um, but I know Dan doesn't do a lot of PC gaming either. Oh, really? And he yeah. has a Switch, and he has, I think, a PS4. So if he's familiar with the game, maybe it is on one of those systems, and I just kind of flew over my radar this could this could be an xbox live arcade game oh it you know could be I mean? it could be yeah. or, you know something that f- flew under the radar but is really yeah good. yeah yeah so uh yeah if we're going back that far that's right so it could be so i want to say my guess would be a last generation console xbox 360 ps3 what about you what do you i'm i'm sticking i'm gonna stay, i'm gonna still say pc okay just because I want to be different. <laughs> and I mean, it could be multi-platform. It could be both. Yeah, so sure. who knows? Um, any idea for a year? So I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm going last generation. So 
I guess anywhere between like 2005 and 2015, something like that, that 10 year span. Yeah, I'm going to say around 2010, okay. give or take a couple of years. Yeah, right in the middle of where, where I think. so. Past decade. Yeah, um, genre. So I'm thinking action, platformer. I'm thinking less shooty and more swing swordy <laughs> weapon melee kind of a deal. I'm going shooty. I wasn't in the, in the in originally, but now having heard the whole soundtrack, I'm going a horizontal shooter. Okay. Okay. Maybe a little slower paced on the R type tip. How much pizza do you think is in this game? Oh man, you know how like in Gradius you have those options. Mm-hmm. Those are pizzas. Those are pizzas. <laughs> those are pizzas flying around your ship. And so we're the, going like maximum of maybe five pizzas at a time. Right. You know those those missiles. Mm-hmm. Those are sausages. Sausage. <laughs> and your bullets are little mushrooms. I am starving. <laughs> <clears throat> it's getting to be lunchtime. That's true. That's true. All right. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. That's 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 where I'm going. I'm going. I'm going horizontal. Shoot 'em up. Okay. Okay. And developer, publisher, oh. Eastern or Western. So I think Western is uh kind of agreed upon here. You think? I think. I think the composer is definitely Western. I think development, it could be, I mean, especially if, if we're talking like in the past decade, this could be a collaboration. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with collaboration. A collaboration between the East and the West. I'm going to go mm-hmm. generally West. Generally okay. West. Um, and that developer publisher, um, it, okay. it, yeah, it wasn't like an eight or 16 bit title where we can easily tell based on instrument sets or composition yeah. styles. So definitely, definitely indie. Def- maybe even without uh, a, like a large publisher, you know, even right. without like a large indie publisher, this could have been like just- a self-published game. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's find Dan's testimony and we will Ooh. start getting some, some real information about this game. All right. So a reading from the book of Dan. <laughs> Lay it on me. I gotta know. <laughs> All right, hold if, on. If this is in code, I'm going to be so pissed. <laughs> let me uh, let me find the file here. All right, all right. Uh, where did I put it? Here, I'll fill up the space here. Do, 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 do. All right, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be stupid on my own podcast. Thank you very much. We can be stupid on each other's podcasts. I've been stupid on your podcast before. So I admit you have every right to be stupid on my podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You said I love lamp. That's too good. (laughs) Lamp. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Well, I'll I'll tell you this then. And while you're looking for that, um, Dan did message me earlier this week Mm -hmm. and said that from the, and and not not to give anything away, because I don't think he gave anything away saying this. He, from the actual developer, um, they are giving us free copies of the game. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That is very cool. Okay, so maybe it's somebody that Dan is aware of. He knows or, or got in contact with and said, hey, we're going to do a show about it. So That's really cool. So maybe, maybe it's more recent than we realized. That is really cool. All right, where the hell did I put this? I put it in a place where I wouldn't look at it, and now I can't find it. Um, oh, wait, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. No, where did he? Oh, maybe he sent it separately. Dan, Dan sent it under his um, under a new email account that he just made, so that so that he was really trying to double bluff, you know, what, what the game was actually <laughs> called uh, or what it was about. I don't know. Maybe this is like some kind of dating sim that's just really like really exciting. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, totally. I would be into that. Um, you have to like, you know, you're you're romancing different um, VGM podcasters, and you ha- and like you go to each date and you have to choose. Like what? What style of game you're gonna you're gonna play and hopefully win them over <laughs> over uh, over a candlelight and, and like depending on who it is like if it's Pernell like you have like you know what, what are you gonna eat is it gonna be like super spicy or is it gonna be wings or I can I can dig that I, I don't know we we can figure this out right now like I think we get a couple good voice actors on it like yeah from Disney we can get a bunch of really good Disney voice actors doing this thing. I think I could be played by Will Smith. I think you would be a really good voice for me. <laughs> um, you would be uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I, that would be perfect. But just the voices. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I can I can do the eyebrow too, so I can work that in somehow. Oh yeah, I mean you can't 
even if he's just voicing a cartoon character. I do it so well you can hear you can see it over the microphone. <laughs> he does it so well. <laughs> like the actual <laughs> microphone like goes <laughs> that's his eyebrow. That was his eyebrow uh, raising. Or this is like one of those throwback um, video, like like uh, enhanced CD-ROM games, and um, you kind of choose your own adventure, like night trap situation. Every time you ah, uh, here it is finally. Holy cow! Okay, so as I said before, a reading from the Book of Dan. So after our episode together and how much you talked up Dead Cells, I wanted to find something similar that you might have fun with. This game came highly recommended to me after brushing it off many times because of the unfortunate artwork promoting the game. Hmm. Oh, okay, so knowing Dan, that means there's uh, provocative ladies in here. But getting into it, I realized it's a very fun roguelike that has permanent upgrades to help you, much like in Dead Cells. It's helpful that this extremely punishing game is complemented by a very enjoyable soundtrack. Oh. I have some of these tunes run through my head from time to time, and I hope the same happens to you. I felt the music was eclectic enough to make each set of stages feel unique, and I never found anything was annoying to listen to in spite of the short loops and the absurd amount of death seal experience. It was difficult to pick your co-host because I love all the VG ambassadors, but there was something about this soundtrack that made me think of Rob. I hope you both enjoyed it, and that maybe you <laughs> and others will check it out when it's on sale. Okay. All right, so we definitely got at least the side-scrolling action part right. correct. Right. A little roguelike going on here. That's kind of cool. Yeah, roguelike side-scrolling action game. Imagining some uh, scantily clad anime uh, women. Uh, that would be on Purnell's side of things. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he's immediately drawn towards that, but I swear, like he's he's always playing something different, and so much, so much of it is like just <laughs> I'm like anime girls. Purnell's playing it. It's like some kind of weird RPG. I'm sure. All right, Xenon Valkyrie. All right, so we are back from a kind of extended break in which Rob and I both uh, scoured the web for information on Xenon Valkyrie. And this game looks awesome. It looks like a lot of fun. It's It's got that kind of cool, like, side-scrolling RPG, like, Maple Story feel. Mm -hmm. But it's, God, it's it, the, the it's dripping with style. Like, the, the backgrounds and the sprites, it's it's really cool. So, like, like Dan said, he recommended it because it had a lot of kind of like Dead Cells features to it, which it really seems to have. Uh, it's played very, very similarly. I think the only difference is that it's a little, like, cuter, um, mm -hmm. but it feels like you pick up weapons in the same way. You get a little bit stronger every playthrough because you kind of keep a percentage of the powers that you had on the previous playthrough so it looks really good the characters are kind of like small chibi style characters yeah very very small um, like the the title artwork on the game looks i mean it's it's i feel like it's it's a classic nintendo style where the the, the gameplay artwork is sort of um abstract of maybe what the concept artwork was that was used for you know, promotion and for the, the the cover you know yeah yeah um it's very cool ribby ribby robby ribby robby Rib Rib Ribby Robbie, that that's one where it's like um, the cover is one thing, and then you play the game, and they're much like smaller, chibi versions of of that, and it works really well because it fits, it creates a whole like world in your mind. Absolutely, and I mean that that harkens back to as old as like the old twenty six hundred days when you'd have these gorgeous hand painted, <laughs> you know, covers for your games, and then you'd go in there and it'd yeah. be like three colors, and they're all squares. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm pretty sure that's ET, but we're gonna we're just gonna suspend my disbelief for a little while because I'm six years old. Yes. All right. So some hardcore details on this game. The composer goes by the name uh, Georgiost or Georgie OST. I think he stylizes it with the OST at the end of the oh. uh, name in capital letters. Uh, his real name is Jorge Mauricio Olivares. And I called the South American thing. He's from Chile. So that's really cool. Um, I, I knew it had that kind of sound to me. Like it felt like the South American scene. Um, and the designer of the game is Daniel Fernandez Chavez. He wrote the entire game on his own for the most part um you, you you took a little bit better look at the credits than i did right were there any other names in there besides <laughs> no, Chavez? it was just him it was uh, uh it was uh, giorgio as the composer and then chavez for everything else that's awesome um, the art the gameplay 
just everything. This is this <laughs> must have taken quite some time. And it was released on the Switch, the PC, the Vita, the PS4, mm -hmm. and the Xbox One. And some of the later releases are called Xenon Valkyrie Plus. And I'm not a hundred percent sure we we didn't have enough time to really search for what the difference was between the original Xenon Valkyrie and the Xenon Valkyrie mm -hmm. Plus. However, we did go to uh, Aldevaris's Bandcamp and inclusion to a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of other music that he's written on the Bandcamp page for Xenon Valkyrie. If you buy the album, it's like 10 bucks, but you get the entire soundtrack and then you get an entire arranged version of the soundtrack as well. So I'm not sure if the Plus version includes the arranged, and I know we listened to the original one. Um, but you get a lot of money for $10 if you go purchase this soundtrack. Yeah, I, I can't wait to check out the arranged version because some of his other soundtracks and some of the other uh, compositions he's done is it's not just chiptune. Um, it seems to be kind of like that was maybe the style they wanted for this game. Yeah. So it's really cool to hear his composition style with a full rock band, with other instruments. So I, I was on the right track with multi-instrumentalist, maybe with traditional uh, mu music, uh, musical background. Yeah, so this as an arranged rock soundtrack would be really neat. For sure, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah I, really I, cool. I, I took a little bit of a listen to the arranged soundtrack, and, and it's still, it feel, I think it was still synthesized, but it had um, more enhanced keyboards, not so chippy, and it was a little a little more modern sounding. There was um, there was a few tracks on the soundtrack that were not in the same like chip style. Yeah, like like two or three of them. I wonder if those were maybe like uh, proto tracks, you know, or like uh, sketched out for certain parts of the game that maybe maybe they didn't maybe didn't even make it back into the game. Maybe that maybe. were just included with the soundtrack. So good question. Um, but that made me start thinking there was two composers, and I was like, that's gotta be something going on here. But no, it is all it's all this style. Watching the gameplay, it's definitely all in that style with the heavy bass and the yeah. It's it's very atmospheric for being chiptune, which is it's really cool that they accomplished that. One other thing I wanted to mention too is that so the files that Dan sent us were all in mono, and the game soundtrack itself is stereo. So I'm going to be using the stereo version of the music in the show itself. Um, so if you notice that we didn't mention any sort of you know stereo panning or anything along with the music, that's because we were listening to it in in mono sound. But I'm gonna get the the, the soundtrack from the Bandcamp, get the full quality version of it available, so you guys can enjoy the soundtrack as the way it was meant to be listened to. Because even even in looking at the gameplay, like the music feels very very different in stereo than it does in mono, um, and I want you guys to be able to enjoy that for yourselves. Yeah, it's, it, uh, the, the stereo effect is really successful. It's it's cool. It's really cool. It's like parts of it get hard panned to the left and to the right, and um, yeah, it adds a lot of movement to the to the music, and it, and it helps center the the bass sounds. So it doesn't it's not as overpowering as it was like all being pushed through mono. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm actually I'm looking forward to listening back through the episode uh, <laughs> again, you know, just just to hear it. So it's gonna be great. That's one of the most fun things. It's like, oh my god, I can't believe how stupid we were. It was right in front of our faces the whole time. Um, <laughs> and you know, we we did we did look at the endings too, and we got close in, in some of the endings and not in the others. But I don't want to obviously spoil that for anybody who's uh, looking forward to playing the game. So I will say that those are two separate endings, though. Yes, which uh, I was surprised to see. And and, and they they are rewarding they are worth playing for uh, especially if this game is a hard game the endings look yes. really cool and there's two different final bosses or at least there's a final boss and a final final boss look forward to that <laughs> so there's the um the pizza chef and then the pizza delivery guy right yes <laughs> yeah, you fight through dominoes and then you fight through little caesar's Ooh. hot and ready <laughs> that's a tough one man and then you fight through the indigestion oh yeah so, uh, so yeah, man. I mean, we got. I think we got pretty close here. Uh, we were able to figure it out pretty, pretty well. I think we used a good combination of uh, Dan's existing tastes in games and clues we were getting from the music to uh, to get pretty super close to to what we were actually looking at. So. I'll give us a solid like B plus on the show. I think for guessing. Yeah, it's fun to listen to the music without the context of the game at all, uh, especially with a soundtrack like this, which is very like video gamey. You know, mm, it's very, yeah. very, very video gamey, and that's and it was a lot of fun. I had a good time. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for joining me, Rob. I know this was a a long show, but I had a a super super good time trying to guess this stuff with you. Yeah, I, I love I love this format of the show, so I was really looking forward to doing it. But yeah, your shows generally run a lot longer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's what caffeine is for. 
which is why I'm usually fueled up every single time we record. So that being said, what you been up to lately, man? You got any good new stuff coming up? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. So um, uh, my podcast with Purnell uh, is Rhythm and Pixels. It's a video game music podcast. We've just um, hit our four year mark, our fourth year. So um, that's that's a big uh, milestone for us. Congratulations. And, um, we have a lot of guests kind of coming up this year. We made a lot of connections at MAGFest in January. So um, that's going to be really exciting. Again, you can hear Purnell on his other podcast called um, Hey. No, it's not right, the website Hey Poor Player. You can check that out. And uh, some of my other stuff, you can go to uh, robnicholsgames.com. That's Rob, N I C H O L S, games.com. Um, that's where I'm doing a lot of my um, all my game work. You can hear some of my new music there too. Um, so it's trying to keep it all centralized in one place. All my, my my development blogs and guides and tips and stuff you can find there. Um, I've got a couple games coming out probably earlier the first quarter this year. One with the Mad Gear, which I've been really excited to to release at the end of February 2020. Yes, and speaking of which, uh, we're going to have Mr. Bruce Irons himself of the Mad Gear on the next VG Embassy. So he's going to be talking a little bit about that game. I know he's going to be on Rhythm and Pixels pretty soon, too, from what he tells me. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's on the calendar, and I don't remember exactly the date, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bunch of guests lined up, uh, developers, composers, and uh, podcast friends, as I like to call everybody here. So... So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one, for sure. Excellent. And of course, you can find all those links in our show notes. So wrapping up the show, I want to thank Indira J for the art and Trevin Hughes, a.k.a. Trevin. Dread, for the podcast Dread, theme song. Dread, Dread. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can find the show on iTunes. We are on uh, Google Play. We are on Stitcher. We are on Spotify, anywhere where great podcasts can be found you can head over to our facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash the vg embassy hit us up on twitter at the vg embassy or check out our patreon site at patreon.com slash the vg embassy and of course i would love to thank our patreon patrons at the tours level we just talked about him cameron shiles aka bruce irons of the mad gear bruce irons. michael bridgewater from Forever Sound Version, who's been a constant <laughs> guest on Rhythm and Pixels as well. Uh, Donovan Orofino, Chris Murray, who's an awesome guy. We got to hang out with him at MAGFest. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bedroth. RVG Emissaries, Chris Myers, John Jekyll, a.k.a. Mix X Master. <laughs> Ben the Dyad Dishman from Dyad Presents, a VGM podcast. He'll be on the show pretty soon as well. Chris Steenerson from the VG Jam podcast. Jordan Worma from the Table to Stage podcast. And David Parrish. Our audio attache members, Cameron Worma, Carlos from the Heroes 3 podcast, Scott McElhone, and our, our secret shadowy guest of the day, Mr. Dan Lawton. <laughs> and we will be seeing some more blind listens from our audio attache members very, very soon. And... We have a new special agent tier. Two members have upgraded to special agent, and that would be Volts Supreme and Daniel Muddle Perky. And so the perk for special agent, (laughs) they get super happy alarms from Rob, (laughs) and uh, they will also get to be guests on a Blind Listen show. So look forward to them appearing on Blind Listens with me very soon. And we can't forget our VG ambassador, the patron saint of VGM podcasts. Who is it, Rob? It's Alex the Messenger. Messenger, also host of Alex Messenger Presents a VGM Journey. And a fantastic show at that. All right. Again, Rob, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I had a super fun time doing this. Oh, man. Thanks for having me on the show. I had a really good time hanging out with you, seeing your lovely fla- your lovely place, <laughs> talking to all of your <laughs> lovely listeners and i can't wait to listen to more flodcasts hooray and don't forget (laughs) listeners uh if you want to talk about the show please use the blind listen spoilers channel on the vg embassy discord you can talk freely there and uh away from prying eyes for people who haven't listened to the show yet like i said we'll be back in two weeks with uh camp childs doing a super nintendo memories episode and we'll be talking a little bit about what the mad gear has been up to lately nice that sounds awesome yeah it's gonna be a fun show because we did our nes memory show uh, a couple weeks back and that that was a lot of fun i really enjoyed that yeah he's 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 great yeah he's just he's so knowledgeable he's so friendly um he's really creative um you know with the band and with his uh video and artwork 
like I just I love the way his brain works and he's just great to talk to yeah he's a grade A dude in my book alright everyone we will see you in two weeks thanks again Good night. Good night.